Jennifer Donna Gockler, Mozilla Parks and Recreation. Ellen Buchanan. Ellen Buchanan, Missoula Redevelopment Agency. Dory Brown, the Missoula County. Mike Kane, City of Missoula Development Services. Lynn Hellegard, Missoula River Valley TMA. Shane Stack, MDT, Missoula District. Chet Krauser, uh, Missoula County Caps. Sarah Cofield, Health Department. Uh, ben Weiss, City Development Services, Bike Pet Office. Juniper Davis, County Parks, Trails, and Open Lands. The audience, please. Thank you. Um, can we have approval of the minutes or any corrections? I'd move to approve. Can I have a second, please? Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Do we have any public comment on anything that is not on the agenda? Okay. Um, let's move on. Hey, it's Vicki and Helena. Hi, Vicki. Thanks. Okay, let's move on to um, new business. Um, we have two <coughs> vice chair elections. Aaron? Yeah, thanks. So, this is our annual election of chair and vice chair. Uh, for TTAC, uh, we typically kind of informally cycle through city, county, MDT, mountain line, health department as the, the chair. Um, currently, and typically the vice chair becomes the chair every year. So um, if that were the case, Shane Stack um, from MDT could be the chair of, of TTAC. Uh, but we would need someone to volunteer to vice chair. Essentially, that's the, to chair the meeting in the absence um, of, of the standard chair. Who's in the normal rotation? It, it's not a, here, I can show you. So I brought a list of our, our past chairs back to 1994. So again, it's not really, there's not a consistent, you know, standard formula, but typically it, rotates through um, those those folks. So um, if we maintain this schedule, someone from the county could be the vice chair and then the chair next year would sort of maintain this general cycling through. Um, but there's no official requirement that it be the county. So um, I guess I would leave it up to members of the board uh, who would be interested in, in being the vice chair chair if that makes sense yeah so yeah. if we keep that rotation yep. Shane would be the chair yep. and Sarah would be the vice chair yeah that could work that could work great so yeah I think it would be a nomination um, for those folks <laughs> and <laughs> hopefully not nominated under too much duress <laughs> but I think typically we do the the nominations for the chair first and then the nominations for vice chair and then the new chair can take over the meeting for January. Ellen? So I nominate Shane Stack to be chair. Can I have a second please? Second. I'll second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Your meeting. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm fine with that. Yeah, typically we have the, the new chair take over once the elections are. All right, perfect. Yeah. So we'll need a nomination for vice chair. Then. I nominate Sarah. Second. All right, a motion and a second. Any discussion from the, the audience or the board? Hearing none, seeing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. And any abstention, same sign. All right, motion passes. We got a, a, a chair and a vice chair. and. and Feel so powerful, T-TAC chair. <laughs> uh, all congr congratulations, Sarah. Um, 
Next item, uh, presentation and review of draft pedestrian facilities master plan, and, and we had one last month, so is this yep. a different presentation? No, well, so last month we gave an update um, on the draft plan. This is not a rehash of that. Essentially, we're here to get a recommendation for TPCC to approve or not approve the plan. So there's not a whole lot of presenting that I'm going to do. Um, I'll just kind of walk through where we what we've done for for public advertising of the plan um, the comments that we've gotten to date and then hopefully we can get if there are any last comments or discussion about um, changes to the draft plan that folks would like to make now would be the time to do it because hopefully we'll have it adopted um, at TPCC this month is our goal so with that um, we've done some advertising of the plan we put out a legal ad in the Missoulian um, we put out notices on the MPO webpage so as we've kind of been doing all along we issued a newsletter um, so we've slowly been getting comments we the plan was to do more public notice before Christmas but with the holidays it's sort of a tricky time to figure out when the best time to get public comment is um, so we'll continue to be taking co public comment through January on any any changes. Hopefully there won't be anything significant at this point. We've done a, a fair amount of public outreach and working with um, stakeholders and folks in the public. So we're not expecting any major revisions. Um, the one piece that doesn't really complicate this plan but is, is maybe timely, there's been a lot of news lately on the city side about sidewalks and pedestrian facilities, particularly the funding. Um, and winter maintenance. I think December was a very busy month for city council in terms of talking about sidewalks. So I guess I see that as a good opportune moment for us to have this plan drafted um, and we'll be presenting to city council next week, getting some feedback um, and informing them about what we've done to date. Um, so uh, anyways, it's a, it's a good time. There may be some tweaks we do to funding for city-related projects or recommendations for funding sidewalks in the plan, um, but it doesn't really affect the, the bulk of what we have here. Most of the, the work that we've done is about the existing conditions, the prioritization, um, some of the issues and, and recommended solutions for those. So again, I think there will be some more, um, hopefully some more news about this plan in relation to what the city's been discussing uh, and we'll get some additional comments and and public input through that so we we did get a number of comments from our our steering committee um, those comments definitely helped refine and make the plan better um, those have all been incorporated into the draft that you saw last month by and large there were a few comments that we received after TTAC um, that have been incorporated now Nothing really substantial, but just you know, some of its minor edits, um, clarifications, making sure that everything that's in the plan is understandable. Um, so those were, were good comments that we integrated. Um, we also received comments from MDT, I believe, it was, yes, uh, yesterday or no Monday. Um, so we will be working on getting those comments um, incorporated into the draft plan. Um, again, most of them were, were clarifications. Nothing really substantial. Um, there was some clarification about what we were calling a shared use path in some places like Target Range Orchard Homes that really doesn't meet, necessarily meet the, the AASHTO um, standards for what a shared use path is. So we'll just do some clarification about what we're talking about, whether it's an actual shared use path or a protected shoulder, um, and make sure that that language is consistent with those, those guides. Um, we also had a comment from MDT about the schedule in the ADA transition plan and what is actually included in those improvements and what standards the city would be building to, um, whether that's um, the 2010 standards for accessible design or PROAG um, or both or some other. So we'll work on clarifying what those improvements identified in that ADA transition plan schedule are and do some additional clarifications there. So again, um, I did want to point out that there's been a lot of talk about sidewalk funding, which is something that we had hoped would happen with this plan, that we talk about how we fund sidewalks, um, particularly as we go into maybe prioritizing some neighborhoods that are, are lower income, have greater um, social and equity disparities, um, and just think about you know, the need that we have out there and how we're funding it and what rate. So again, the, the 
conversations that have been happening around Missoula are certainly opportune. They came out a little bit ahead of, I guess, what we had anticipated with, with adoption of this plan. But it's really good because it'll, it'll force us to think about this at the time when we're, City Council is also adopting this plan and we have a good strategy moving forward. So um, I don't expect that to affect this plan much, but it will affect how we implement the plan and potentially some of our recommendations. And just so everyone kind of has an idea of one of the issues that we're facing with sidewalks are the cost or the growing costs of constructing sidewalks. So this is something we touched a little bit on in our presentation last month, but I thought it was worth um, repeating as we think about adopting this plan, just the, the cost that's associated with building out our sidewalk network and what the need is um, and how quickly we can build those. So this chart is just showing the cost per mile to construct sidewalk over the last seven or eight years. And you can see it's gone up pretty steadily uh, over the last three or four years. You know, there's always some fluctuation from year to year depending on the, you know, not every sidewalk project is the same. Some are more expensive, some are easier, just depending on the kind of work that's done. But the general trend is they are consistently getting more expensive. So that's part of our, our work that we're doing with the, working with the city staff on um, how do we fund these, where is that cost coming from, and how is that going to potentially impact property owners as we go about building these sidewalks. Yeah, Ellen. What is the orange bar as opposed to the blue bar? Oh, yeah, sorry. So the, the orange bars are the annual cost of site. So just looking at the total cost, amount of money spent on sidewalks in that year and how many miles were built, the blue is the average project cost. So doesn't, it seems like they should be the same, but I think it, if you have, you know, one really big project that has a high cost, that could affect the, the project average. Um, but essentially, you know, they're, they are on the same trajectory, so. Key is projects and average cost over time are, are all going up. So something to think about as we go into thinking about you know, not just adopting the plan, but how do we implement it? Um, some of the challenges, there are challenges with funding that we will have to wrestle with. So the next steps for this plan are going to TPCC on January 15th uh, for adoption. Uh, we'll be presenting to City Council next week and then going back to them after TPCC adopts the plan for City Council to, to adopt it. Um, and then we'll likely go to the, the county commissioners as well for them to adopt. I believe they've adopted our other infrastructure plans and this plan does cover areas outside of city limits that are within Missoula County. So those are our, our next steps. We'll be taking public comment through all of this. There's definitely still time to make changes or refine or, or cl make clarifications. So we're always happy to get additional comments. So with that, that's where we're at. Take any last questions or if, if folks do have comments, things that they'd like to see us work on in the next couple of weeks. I'm happy to hear that. Any questions? Yeah, go ahead, Ben. Um, I, this plan calls, like it really highlights the fact that we're 80 to 100 years away from completing the network and that it's millions and millions of dollars of sidewalk that need to be uh, built and, and repaired, uh, and we just canceled our sidewalk program. How, do we anticipate this, like that, going smoothly with council? Or, like, I mean, this plan is calling for increased expenses or, you know, uh, putting money at it, and we just removed money from sidewalk. So, do we think that that's going to square? Like, if we adopt this, are, is council going to not adopt it? No, I don't think. I haven't heard any indication from folks on city council that they would not adopt this plan. Um, again, the funding is a challenge that the city council will have to figure out how sidewalks are funded in the city. Um, keep in mind too that, you know, when we talk about 80 to 100 years, that would be sidewalks on just about every street in Missoula. And I think we can be, at least in the near term, be strategic in where we put sidewalks to get benefit from that investment um, while not necessarily having a sidewalk on every street, um, on both sides of every street within the city of Missoula. I mean, it's a good goal to have, but it will certainly take us a while to get there. Um, and my understanding is that city council isn't canceling the sidewalk program. It's being postponed for a year to figure out this funding issue primarily. And how are we, how are we funding sidewalks? And what is the impact on property owners? Because 
currently, um, you know, a certain percentage. There's a, there's an assessment process with sidewalks and the city limits. So, um, you know, a certain portion of that is paid for by the property owner. Um, and as these projects get more expensive, that assessment is getting more and more expensive. And there's some concern on council that some properties are seeing huge assessments for, for these projects and try, trying to figure out a way that we can equitably address that, especially as we move into neighborhoods that are maybe lower income or would see a much bigger impact and likely can't afford these kinds of assessments. So I don't see this sidewalks not being constructed. I think it's more of a looking at our, our funding that we have available, how, how we're currently doing it and looking for creative ways to reduce that impact on property owners. All right, thanks, Aaron. Any other questions from uh, the group? How about the audience? Any questions? Hello, uh, Kevin Slovarp, City Engineer, um, Development Services. <clears throat> what I guess I'd like TTAC and TPCC to consider through adoption of, of this, um, this uh, plan, excuse me, is um, if there would be any funding sources that the MPO could bring to bear on, on this actual program itself, um, any funding that the MPO might have to devote towards sidewalks, um, whether that's CMAC or urban funds or anything else would um, allow the city and um, other jurisdictions that, that might be looking to install sidewalks um, to um, um, basically increase the rate of those sidewalks install as they're installed. Um, and so we might not be looking at hundreds of years. We, we could you know, look at 20 or 30 or 50 years instead. So um, if there's an opportunity for uh, the MBO to provide uh, funds towards uh, sidewalks, I would uh, request that you identify that and look into that and, and then, you know, let folks know that, uh, that are managing these programs, such as myself and, and Monty Sype that's here too for the city. So um, just, uh, just a recommendation. So um, thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Any additional comments? All right, seeing none. Aaron, do you have anything else? I don't think so. Okay. I think we've done a fair amount of presenting over the last couple of months, so okay. hopefully we're all familiar. All right, so that covers new business, nothing on old business, uh, announcements and, and closing Wait. comments. Guys, would it be possible to get a, a recommendation to TPCC to adopt? We that can. Would be, that would be great. Yeah, all right. I don't know if that made it onto the <laughs> agenda or not, but it should be. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If you need a, if you need yep. a recommendation. I guess I'd entertain a, a motion uh, for a recommendation of the plan. I'll move that we recommend TPCC adopt the pedestrian facilities master plan. Second. All right. Motion and a second. Any additional comment from the board? How about public comment? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. And any abstention, same sign. All right, motion passes. Now we're done with old business. Yeah, we are. Or, I'm sorry, new business. <laughs> yeah. On to old business and nothing there. Uh, announcements and closing comments. Anything? I would just say uh, welcome to, to Chet uh, on the, uh, the TTAC. And, and uh, I know, I think Juniper, too, you were new last month, but welcome to you as well. So we've got a couple of new faces on the board. So um, anything else from the group? All right. I don't think so. Uh, Thanks. We'll adjourn the meeting then. Thanks. Yep, thank you.